let's start with the basics. How to make things feel alive when visitors interact with them. Hover and press effects are small touches that make a big difference. By giving visitors tangible feedback, that makes it super clear if something is clickable in the first place and if they've clicked it successfully. In this lesson, we'll walk through how to create these two effects in Framer in just a couple of clicks. To get us started, I'm gonna jump straight into our project file here, which you'll find if you're watching this video on framer.com slash academy, right below the video. I'll include a remix link there for you. If I scroll down in this project file, you can see that I've got some examples here for us to work on. And we're gonna start with hover. So to add the hover effect, I'm going to select this layer. And this layer is just a frame with an image fill. And I'm gonna head over here to the properties panel and head down to effects. Now, when you click here to add an effect, you'll find that there are quite a few of them. And by the end of this course, you'll be familiar with every single one of them. But for now, we're gonna start with the hover effect. And when I add the hover effect, I get this little modal where I can choose how I want this layer to appear when the cursor's hovered over it. So what we're seeing on the canvas here is a reflection of the settings that we modify here in the modal. So for example, if I bring our scale up to 1.3, you can see that it's now 1.3 times the size that it was before on the canvas. But we're only seeing that on the canvas because we have the hover effect modal open. So we can preview the effect that we're creating as we create it. I could also set an offset if I want to and have the layer move on hover. I could have the layer rotate a little bit on hover. And let's actually do that just to make it more obvious, make it more drastic. I could play with the opacity. You could see all the properties here that we have to play with. And then finally, we have the transition, which determines how the movement actually happens. Now, the next lesson is where we're really going to get into transitions and master the different easing curves that we have available to us. So stay tuned for that one. But for now, we'll probably just stick with a basic spring. I'll set this to a physics based transition. And uh, I'm going to bring down the stiffness quite a bit here to sort of let this thing wiggle and I'll bring the mass up a little bit. And again, we're going to go over all of this in the next lesson. So don't worry too much about what all these properties mean because we're going to go through them one by one. But now, essentially, we've decided that on hover, we want this layer to grow to 1.3 times its original size or 130% is another way to describe that. And we also want it to rotate 20 degrees. And we also have a toggle here between 2D and 3D rotation. I'm going to stick with 2D for now, just so we rotate on that Z axis only. But really, the fun comes from previewing this. So I'm going to close the modal. I'm going to press Command P on my Mac to go into preview mode here. And we'll scroll down and find that layer. And when I hover over it, there we have it. It's doing that spring effect. And it's returning back to its default position when I'm no longer hovered over it. So on hover, we get that transform that we created. And when we hover away, it goes back to normal. It's that simple. Press is very similar, except the triggering action is going to be clicking down the mouse button or pressing with our finger on mobile instead of just hovering the cursor over it. And naturally, hover is specific to desktop where we actually have a cursor, whereas press applies to both desktop and mobile. So I'm going to go back to our design canvas here. I'm going to select this layer and I'm going to go back to the effects section on the properties panel. I'm going to click and this time I'm going to choose to add a press effect. So in this case, the defaults are a little bit different. You'll notice that it's scaled to 0.9. It actually scales down instead of up by default. And that's to kind of give the effect of pushing the thing in it's pushing away from us, so it's getting a little bit smaller. So I'm going to run with that. I'm actually going to let that scale down to 0.8 or 80% of its original size. And uh, I'm going to leave these things alone for the most part, except maybe the spring. Maybe I'll set the spring to similar settings that I did for our hover here, which I believe was around 200 for the stiffness. Damping, I think I left at 30. And mass, I'm going to double to 2. And again, I'll dismiss that modal. I'll press Command P to go into preview mode here. And now when I hover, nothing, because again, we set this interaction to be on press. When I click, there we go. When I click, we see that effect taking place. And I think in my example, I had this rotating 90 degrees as it pressed as well, which I thought was kind of a cool effect. So at any time we can select this layer again, we can go back to the effect modal here and we can say, yeah, let's rotate this 90 degrees as well. And let's see what that looks like. Again, Command P on my Mac to go into preview mode. Control P if you're on a PC, by the way. 
And there we go. Now we've got that rotation happening with the scale as I press and hover again happens as soon as the cursor mouses over it. And there you have it. With hover and press effects in place, your sights will immediately feel more tactile and alive. And they don't just make an experience more visually delightful. These effects are subtle cues that help visitors navigate with even less effort. Again, great interactions aren't just about motion. They're about meaning. That's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one.